Welcome back everyone to the Museum of Pintopia where today we are going to begin to build our walls. That's right, we'll finally have walls for our museum. And to start on that, we will build the wall at our office to give us a nice look at the smaller scale of it. And once we do that, we can scale it up for the rest of the museum. Now, I don't think we've got enough materials to enclose the entire area, but it should give us enough so that we could tell if we are going on the right track or if I'm going to need to go into another direction. Now, my plan right now is to have mud bricks on the corners. Well, let's do this as an example here. So here we have mud bricks. Let's go four high. Actually, also... Let's go one down in that direction also. And I'm not too sure if I want the mud bricks here or if we're just going to rely on the wall over here. Because there obviously will be a wall coming here on this side right here. So yes, let's go with the assumption that this will be the inner one instead of the outer one. So let's continue like this on this corner. So we will do this little section right over here. Now, we have the bottom and up here is going to be mud brick. What we want though is to have bricks for the rest right over here. Mm. No, that will have the brick wall too high. So that's not going to be a good plan. I can already tell that one's off. So instead of doing that, what we'll do is that we'll make the section down here stone brick down the foundation because I don't want cobblestone showing for this bit over here so we'll put stone brick down here Let's see, do we want stone brick there also? yeah we'll want stone brick here also so we'll put stone brick here and now we will have brick going down here because if we have the wall here we will be seeing here and I didn't want to see this lip right here being stone oh, hold on if I do that well I suppose we could think of the stone brick as being a border I may eventually have to change that to polished diorite I have to think about that later I didn't consider that when I was decided to use stone brick walls here. Hmm. I may wind up going back to the mud brick in that case. I'll have to see how that works. But the next step on here is that we will have this up here. Now we are going to be going I think it's six or seven high let's go to the center here the idea here is that this circle right here the radius of this circle is going to be the same as the height the idea here is that this square these four blocks right here form the very tip of a circle that's going to be going that there's a circle there we We'll actually have a dome that's going to be composed of this circle. The lower half of the circle is obviously not going to be there since the people will be walking on there. We'll have a main exhibit right here with a dome on top. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that means this is going to be here. So this is on the floor. We've got one, two, three, floor high plus this will be the ceiling height. That gives a ceiling height of only five. I don't like that. So instead, we'll assume then that the circle grazes the floor. So that's so the bottom is one up, 
two, three, four, five, and that the ceiling will be. No, actually, no, we'll put the ceiling at seven then. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put the ceiling at seven, so that would be the second half of the radius. So the bottom half of the circle will be six air blocks, and then seven will be the top layer there. So therefore, we are going to be wanting this to be six sides. This is one, two, one, two, three, four. It'll be going too high after this. And what we're going to do is we are going to have glass in some areas. Obviously, the glass is sometimes going to be broken up. This is This window might be too large. We'll have to see. Uh, for now, do this. And then the brick wall will go up two more after this. But this is sort of our start. So we'll start by going four high. That way we'll get used to that, start getting the whole thing enclosed. Then we'll worry about getting the wall after that. We'll probably have the sixth spot is probably going to be mud brick in any case to help frame this. Yeah, so we'll have to help frame this and when we form the roof. I think that works out quite well. Now, in the center of the rear, I have the rear entrance and in this I needed to use the mud brick around the door area because you really can't properly connect wall to door. So I did it this way. Maybe I'll come up with a different block I want to use in order to use for the door frames but I also use that for the door frame here for the interior doors. Now for the interior walls I am using polished deep slate wall here. In fact, I think I will do the same thing right over here to match what I did over on that side. This has a double wide exit because this is a public place so we may have numerous people coming through here. So I have a wider one. This is intended as an office. So to discourage people from using it and the like, it's going to be using a single door. Now I do have a low wall going all around right now. That is to help defend against mobs. Eventually I will be adding more wall to it. But right now I am out of bricks. In fact, I think I managed to do more with the bricks than I was expecting. So that's good. But I am going to have to get some more bricks and that means either finding clay and making bricks that way finding another trail ruins where you might be able to do about another third of this and maybe a third trail ruins I could finish up the entire area as that is my current guess as to how much I can do for this so I say three trail ruins worth of bricks needed in order to complete this whole thing. But it's a start. Well, I've taken precautions to keep mobs from coming into here from the outside. And perhaps when I get the rest of the walls done, I won't have to worry about skeletons shooting over the lower walls. I do have to worry about mobs spawning inside of here. If I'm in here and it gets dark and all. This place could become a mob farm. So I'm going to need to light up this area and the question is in what way? Now I do have some shroom lights and I'm wondering if this would work. I don't think I want to use jack-o-lanterns so I'm going to say those are out. But what if in various areas where I currently have granite that I use shroom lights? And perhaps this will look nice. And if it does, I will have to go into the nether, get more shroom lights. And that way I'll be set. So let's see how this looks. Hmm. Yeah. 
might work. On top of the question about lighting, there's also the question about the borderline floor. Now, as I said before, I really don't like the idea of having cobblestone here, and I was thinking of using stone brick as I used right over here. But I'm not thinking that granite might work better, because that way, on the interior, we've got granite here on the border, and I think that'll match this. Now, on the exterior, it might look a little strange, but it might work out with the wall over there. So perhaps this would be good. So I'm going to replace the edges with polished granite and see how that works. I think I've got plenty of light now. I placed it where the granite and the andesite are crossing with each other. I also replaced some of the singular granite pieces with the light instead so that that works there and I put a few light dots in the center to make sure that we're well lit in this location so I think I managed to get it so that we'll have at least a level one light everywhere within the museum and if I miss something well I suppose at some future point I will find out It appears that I am going to definitely need a roof over this place at some point. But, today's not the day for that. What I need to do now is to start getting some exhibits. Because a museum is more than a floor, more than walls, even more than an eventual ceiling that's going to go here. The most important thing to a museum is that we have exhibits. And that's what we were collecting last time when we were out in that trail rooms. We were collecting these shirts. And we we're also collecting these smithing templates. And one CD. Hmm. Well, we'll have to do something about that CD at some point. Let's start out with the shirts and let's see if we could come up with something to do with them. Now I have got, if my count is right, 16 of these shirts. Now we have three of them. We actually have five of them for danger. So there's a lot of danger in the story over here. And we have three sheaves, three friends, three heartbreaks, and a howl. So how are we going to arrange these? Now, 16 and all, that means we could have four of these pots. And that could be able to work. Then the other possibility is to have one blank side and then three with them on there. Especially considering that if we are showing these and placing them against the walls, there's going to be a side that no one's going to be able to see. So how about this? We have danger in all five of the pots. Of course, we will also have a brick for the back side. And then, on this one, the danger is we have the howl, which I believe is a wolf of some sort, and heartbreak. So, something about the wolf causing heartbreak. Then, we have friendship broken. And another one. So, apparently, there are two friendship broken ones here. Then, friend with Heart, so friendship restored, and then we have sheaf with another she sheaf. What are you doing over there? Excuse me, it looks like I've got a customer. You have anything interesting for me? We've got a slime ball. Four emeralds for one slime ball. That's a bit expensive. Piece of coral, lily of the valley, sapling. Now, if you had a sapling I didn't have yet, maybe something like a mangrove propagule, that would have been great, but nope. And of course, I got podzol from the 
giant spruce that I've got over there. So apparently, nothing interesting. I guess they're just there to admire the gardens. Speaking of the gardens, though, I now find that these are a bit cramped here now that I have walls around here. I would hope that we'll be able to have the guests room around here. So I'm probably just going to turn this into a flower garden up against the wall and that there'll be a path along there which the viewers can take. So what about the grain and the pumpkins and the melons? I'm going to have to find a place out over here where we could have our farming exhibit. Yes, that we could have a little bit more room for it. Someone could roam around seeing various crops and things like that. I think that'll be for the best. Now, let's see about these pots. If I understand this right, <laughs> they're just jumping all over the place in the garden. Ah, all right, let's not get distracted in there. So we'll want bricks into here. We'll put, can we put all the dangers together? All right, into there. All right, that's good. So we only have how for that. I think we have three heartbreaks. So we could put three heartbreaks there. So we'll. So here's our first pot. Here's our second pot. And so it gives a list of each of the items in there. Here is the third pot. Then we can have the. The friend with heart. And then finally, uh, the sheaf, a double sheaf. Actually, let's put the danger like that, opposite e the sheaves opposite each other, and then the danger against the one over there. So now I have five pots. And these could be our first exhibits for the museum. Three, four, Now this could be could this be a good place to be putting them or should we put them down here? One two, this we have eight over here. Hmm. So let's see what happens if we put it like this? So yeah, Howl is a wolf and then we got the the broken heart over there. Then we could have here, we have the, oh, danger is a creeper. I guess I should have figured that out. And then here we have a broken heart. And I, but that's friend, villager. All right, and there's a creeper with the villager also. Yeah, I can see a creeper plus villager giving you a broken heart. And that seems to happen quite a bit. And then we could have this one here where we've got the creeper here and a full heart okay and then finally we'll have the last one here oh, I, hmm. can I put it here creeper there Oh, okay, that's, oh, I guess it's night time. I can only imagine that the Wandering Trader is drinking llama milk. I know that llama milk isn't a standard item in the game, but that certainly seems the most likely source of milk that he will consistently have. All right, here we go. This is, oh, that's the sheaf, I guess. I guess that's the sheaf, that's the creeper, and that's the sheaf. Okay, fine. So there are our first pots for the exhibit, and I'm having them a little bit separated from each other so that one could go around and examine each of the sides, putting the blank side against the wall. I think that works. Now let's put in a couple of pots here so that we could have some flowers in these. 
or actually not flowers, we will instead have just a sapling to show off on with it. And maybe have one that goes with each of them as we come along. So, so far we've got five pots that gives us five saplings. Uh, maybe we'll have some more at some future date. Now that we have our first exhibit, we can now think about the second one, and those would be armor stands, where we'll be showing off a set of armor. Now, for now, we'll start out with one, because let's have a look at how many armor trims that we have. We have only seven of these. That means we can have one full set of armor, and then three extra. Now... I want to save one of each of these. That way, at some future time, if I have enough diamonds, I know unlikely, maybe I could duplicate some of these. So these are the ones that I can use without getting rid of my last copy of one of these types. So I'm going to create one set of armor, one of each of the four pieces, and in this, I'll have two of these using the shaper, armor trim and two of these using the razor armor trim but I think I'm gonna save uh, that little thing for the next episode of Pineley Plays Minecraft Museum of Pinetopia